The build show today, we're back at my crappy 1970s house that we're doing a whole house remodel on. We've already met with the architect, we have some plans for the house, but in this video, we need to talk about the performance of the house. And I've got my expert, Sean Harris with me. Now, Sean, you and I go way back. We've been building together for a long time. Sean is gonna do a home performance assessment with us on this house. And Sean, tell me about the first step in that, which is this big red door behind us. Okay, great. So uh, we're gonna be doing what's called a blower door test, where we hook up a fan to the front door and we basically try and inflate this, this house like a balloon, right? Mm -hmm. So you have this balloon inside that's inflating. We measure how much air is coming in to inflate the balloon. And with all the leaks, all the leaks inside this balloon, uh, we're having to do more and more pressurization to, to get it to fill. And as we're doing that, we're measuring the leakage of, of the house. All right, Sean, now we actually just ran that test and it, it did not turn out good, did it? No, no, it didn't at all. <laughs> so talk me through the test and the numbers that we found over here, Sean. Okay, so uh, our fan has a calibrated opening on it, so I can measure the amount of airflow going in in order to then figure out how many holes where the air is going out. And so with that, we came up with 9,000 cubic feet of air per minute that are going through that fan and then out all the holes without being able to sort of maintain the pressure of the house. So it was so leaky that I couldn't really get a good pressurization on it with just one fan. I really need two fans to get a good, uh, good amount of pressure in there. Um, the next thing to talk about is how much is 9,000 CFM of, of leakage, right? A so lot. a CFM is like a basketball. So if you imagine 9,000 basketballs going out of the house uh, under pressure, obviously not under natural conditions, but that's a significant amount. Um, if you were to change that into an opening size, that's about a seven foot opening. So oh seven gosh. by seven. It's like having a seven foot door yeah. open in the house at all, all the times. time. Exactly. Yeah. So if, if, you're a if you're a builder watching this, we have to do blower door tests now because of national code. And in my area where I am, Climate Zone 2, Austin, Texas, I have to maintain a five ACH 50. That's five air changes. That's the whole volume of the house. It can't be any more leaky than five air changes per one hour at 50 pascals. Mm -hmm. Now, we can get 50 pascals of pressure on this blower door, but that's kind of like a 20 mile an hour wind acting on your mm -hmm. house. So if it's windy outside, that wind is blowing through your house and allowing that air that you've paid for and conditioned to, to come out all those locations, all those seams, all those hatches and doors and things like that. So what numbers did we get on this house, Sean, with that in mind? Yeah, so uh, so five ACH50 is code, 27 ACH50 <laughs> is, is this house, uh, which is, is crazy, crazy leaky. It's so real um, bad. five times the amount that uh, you would be allowed. And if you're in the north, most places in the north have a code of around three ACH50. If you're building a really good house, you really want to shoot for below two or even below one, if at all possible, mm -hmm. when it comes to air tightness. It's really important to get control of that envelope in the air. Mm -hmm. This house has no control currently. We're going to be doing a mm -hmm. lot. Next up, let's go take a look at the duct system because Sean also uh, can do a duct blaster test. I'm curious how leaky we are, but let's go see what our conditions of our attics are and our duct work. So Sean, I'll meet you up in the attic. All right, Sean, how's it look up there, buddy? Uh, it's looking hot at the moment, Matt. I'm looking around at uh, some uh, gray Mylar Flex up here. Now we have masks, but we're not wearing them just so we can talk for the camera. But when you go up in your attic, people, put your masks on, all right? You don't want this stuff in your lungs, trust me. Mm -hmm. What's this, uh, what are these little black dots I'm seeing all over the insulation, John? Yeah, unfortunately those are rodent droppings, Matt. That's yeah, uh, not that's... a good sign, uh, not a good sign for your ductwork. Uh, they really like eating on the, the ductwork. Um, oh, yeah. It's funny, these, these triangle boxes, they're called cheese wedges. Uh, uh -huh. And so it's funny that mice like the, the cheese. Oh yeah. Um, they also eat into the, the regular insulation too. They see this is like oh, yeah. right here is sort of some damage from some rodents. So uh, there's a cut on that cheese box. What's up with yeah, that? Yeah, I some obviously some previous person came in to inspect and they didn't seal it back. This is terrible. Duct leakage. Basically, you've got cold air coming out of these unsealed seams, uh -huh. and that's going to cause all sorts of issues, not to mention humidity. So it's so humid up here right now. Yes, it it's is. It's 80, 90 degree dew points, and all that moisture is going to go straight in here, and then you can get moldy ducts. What's in there? So uh, let's Take find out. One second. You got a flashlight? Yeah. Gosh, the, the rat droppings are everywhere, Sean. Yep. Man, it's disgusting. Okay. They've chewed on this Romex cable over here, too. 
Yep, so that's uh, not good in here, Matt. You should come check this out. Uh, it's, what are you uh, finding, man? That sounds bad. Yeah, not great. What do you got? So it looks like some uh, some oh, rat droppings gross. and maybe some, some liquid in there. Oh, the man, stains. the rats are running the ducks, aren't they? They are. Ugh, look at that duck board. It's stained in there. Yep. That's disgusting. Oh, dude, I've got ducks in the, I've got rats in these ducks, don't I? Yeah, it looks that way. Man, I can't salvage these. I gotta rip these out. Mm -hmm. There's no way I, I wanna salvage these. Plus, they're up here in this hot attic. That's the worst place for your ducks. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is what do you think the temp is up here? Uh, I'd imagine about 130 degree ambient temperature, probably. Uh, attics in Texas get up to 140 even, so uh, it, it and gets And it's what, gets 90 hot. out today, so yeah. it's 40 yeah. degrees hotter in this mm -hmm. attic even mm -hmm. than outside. It is a lot. And Those so, black shingles are just heating this up. Definitely. And so, so this ductwork here is called gray mylar flex mm -hmm. and it's typically installed back in the eighties or so. Yep. Um, I don't know if there's an R value on them someplace, but typically this was like an R4 duct. Uh, now to, nowadays code is R8. So twice the insulation uh, is, is what's on uh, newer ducts now. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. So that's, that's one of the contributing factors into whether or not you would replace. Uh, but definitely with, with rodents in the, in the ducts like this, you don't know where the, all the holes are, and it, it just makes sense to replace, And we've got very little insulation up here, too. I mean, we've got, what, four inches of insulation at best because we've got all the, uh, the bottom uh, cord on these rafters, or on these 2x4 trusses is all showing. Yeah. You know what else is gross? You're seeing, like, tunnels mm -hmm. under here, like rats just running through those tunnels. Yep. Man, it's disgusting. It is. Man, I think I'm going to get a vac crew out here. Let's vacuum out all this insulation. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that we're probably going to rip all these ducks out, and we got to figure out how to bring these ducks into condition space when we do this. This is just terrible, Sean. That's great. That's really bad, man. Best thing you can do is definitely put it into condition space. However, mm -hmm. that being said, if you had to have ducks up here, there's probably some air sealing that could be done and some re-insulation and you could change out this duct work to a much better, newer duct that's better air sealed and you could duct blast it to make sure it was tight, couldn't Definitely. you? Definitely, yes. If you had to stick with this, if you mm -hmm. were doing a lower cost remodel or you really wanted to, I, I just can't do it, man. I can't not take it all the way and do it right. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, the, um, the air that's moving through here is 500 to 700 feet per minute. So the air is moving through here really, really fast, yeah. which is how they were able to get away with such thin layers of insulation, right? Yeah. Code is R38, like huge, 19 inches of insulation. Yep. But on your ductwork, there's only, in this case, only an inch. And the reason why that is is because air is moving so fast through there that it doesn't quite have the time to heat up. But when you, when you were talking about a 55 degree, um, you know, temperature inside there and 140 degree temperature out here. Huge delta. It's like trying to make ice in an oven. Why, why do you want to make ice in an oven? You, yeah. you don't, you know. And you know what, when your AC turns off and these ducts heat up, mm -hmm. it's blowing hot air as if you've got a hair dryer on. Exactly. Before the cold air pushes that out. So yeah. you're heating your house first before you cool it. Definitely. definitely. Pretty dumb. Mm-hmm. All right, man, uh, let's, go, let's go get the guys to suck out the insulation. Let's get back to a baseline. Uh, and I'm going to talk to the Positive Energy uh, boys about an HVAC design yeah. for this house. And I need to figure out what to do with insulation. Definitely. whether you insulate on the flat or to bring the insulation up to the roof mm -hmm. line. So we got some more discussions to have. And, and Matt, one other thing, when you have rats in your attic, you definitely want to check electrical wires and things like that. I noticed some, some wiring over here yeah. that's been chewed on. Yeah, this uh, one's been chewed on May right needs there. an electrician in here to sort of um, replace or repair some of these wires. Yeah, to make sure we don't have a short or a fire in mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, before we leave the attic, a couple of things I wanted to point out. It took me a second to realize this. See these brown kind of streaks on the very top of the ducts? You know what that is? That's rats running on top of the ducts. And look at this everywhere. Like these ultra brown spots, that's probably other droppings and this is just their dirty feet. Rats were all over the place up here. Oh, another couple of things that are interesting. Look, this cedar you're seeing here, that's the back of the cedar siding and there's just tar paper sheathing this house. My guess is there's no sheathing on this house. There's just this uh, looks like, you know, kind of 70s, 30 pound tar paper on the house. Also interesting that we've got trusses up here, which makes remodeling harder than a traditionally framed house. So we're going to have to get an engineer involved to tell us um, with some of the architectural changes and a few th ceiling things changing how to do that. And then if you shine your light back in here, also interesting to see that 
We don't have any insulation in this section here. See how we're just seeing the top of the sheetrock where those ducts are going through? Terrible. I mean, my guess is uh, this previous owner's electric bills were through the roof. And then over here, look at this. We, this is the wall that separates this attic from that upstairs family room that's at the top of the stairs. We got a bat falling down right there. We got another bat falling down there. That may have been, that may have happened a week after the house was built in the 70s. And it's been like that ever since. And that's been a hot spot upstairs for possibly two or three decades that this client's been paying, uh, you know, an extra $10 a month in cooling for that space right there that's totally uninsulated. Mm -hmm. And then again, these ducts coming from the house in, you can see daylight through a bunch of places in the sheetrock like that outlet right there huge amounts of air are, are traveling through that space. Mm -hmm. And depending on how the pressures and the winds were going, that may have been 130, 140 degree air being pressurized and pushing through that outlet right there. So when we're talking about air leaks, it's not, it's not just the, uh, the pushback I always hear, all your houses are too tight, you're gonna kill people because there's not enough fresh air. No, we can bring in fresh air, but we need to bring it in on our terms we need to filter it. We don't want just air leaking in willy-nilly whenever the wind blows. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, I just realized this too. Look how dirty this two by four is. Mm -hmm. Oh no, that's not from rats though. I thought that might've been from rats. That right there though is from rats. See mm -hmm. that nastiness on top there? That's from rats and they were chewing on it too. Oh my gosh. And this vaulted ceiling, there's like a, you know, a, a two by four sized insulation bat <laughs> on that ceiling. So we get to go inside and use the uh, IR camera in there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm curious. It's great to see. Like this is something else I didn't really expect to see. What's that? Holes in the top of the ductwork. So rats have chewed on the inside of the duct. Oh you see those black gosh. spots? Oh my gosh! Can you see that on camera? So, uh, so we're looking at the infrared uh, version of this duct right now, and the black spots are cold. So anything sort of yellow and white is really, really hot, and anything black is really, really cold. And here is basically holes inside the duct that we really can't see from from the outside here but we can definitely see from a um, from a thermal perspective we're definitely losing a lot of uh, a lot of cold air into the attic instead of making it into the space and while you're there too and you got the camera pointing in that direction look at this see how we can see the um, the plywood all the way down into the soffit and there's there's no baff there's no insulation baffles at the edge i did a video on it not too long ago but if you were to re-insulate this house traditionally, you'd have to add some baffles so that insulation wouldn't just fall out of the soffit or be wind washed back. So there's some, boy, there's some serious work that needs done on this house. Mm -hmm. On the positive note, this plywood from the roof sheathing is in good shape. And if you ever did have a leak in here, it would certainly dry up without causing any rot or damage. So probably not gonna find any rot, but what we're finding in this is that this house is a huge energy pig. And the bills on this house in the summertime uh, are probably between $500 and $1,000 a month uh, to try and cool this house that's so leaky uh, and has such bad insulation. All right, let's get out of this hot attic. Whew, it was hot up there, Sean. It Some was. Some serious heat, wasn't yeah, it? it was, it was pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, so summarize the problems on this house. There's a lot of them, but- There what, are a lot, what, exactly. What could you say to summarize the problems on this house? Definitely, so, uh, so indoor air quality is the main issue here, and so a lot of these problems go back to that indoor air quality piece. Yep. So uh, the insulation up there, there's minimal insulation, it's compressed, uh, the rodents have been going across it. Mm -hmm. So all of that can be then basically brought into your, your, your building envelope, essentially. Yeah. We did the blower door and found out how leaky it was. All of that insulation is connected with, with our space, which is yeah, crazy. Bad. Exactly. So we've got some missing bat insulation, some, some knee walls that the bats have fallen down, and that's another, another huge one. Uh, we found a, an outlet up there where you can see daylight, see through into the house, which uh, that means that there's a lot of... I've heard you say before, those outlets and all those things on the outside is death by a thousand cuts. Exactly. Each one of them is small amount of leakage, but you've got outlets everywhere. Mm -hmm. You've got light fixtures everywhere. What were some of the bigger holes that we found on the envelope though? Yeah, so some of the bigger envelope holes are gonna be the, the water heater closet on yeah. this house was really bad. You the, could feel the air on the blower door was running. Exactly, the attic access is also a huge hole. Yeah. So, so sealing that up is gonna be sort of low hanging fruit. We're yep. gonna get those larger holes sealed, which is gonna be great. Um, then there's the, the duct system. So the duct 
duct leakage itself is open to the attic. Uh, the ducts are in unconditioned space as well as the equipment being in unconditioned space. And so it's, it's really difficult. It's like trying to make ice in an oven. You're not, you're not going to get there. So, Great analogy. Um, yeah, so uh, aside from those things, uh, you, you've really got your work cut out for you, Matt, I think. Yeah, uh, we're going to have to make yeah. some changes in the mm -hmm. South Shop. Mm -hmm. We went I, on the last video. I talked about how my budget probably doubled with the architecture, and it's definitely going up with some of these things as well. I mean, it's not just changing the windows from single pane windows to a better window and changing out siding for new siding. We've got a lot of air sealing to be done here. We need new equipment, new duct work. Um, we've got to make sure this envelope on the outside is taken care of because right now it's in terrible shape. And I'm sad to say that a lot of houses today in Texas are still built to these same kind of methods, aren't they, Sean? Yes, sir, I see uh, them all the time. I see them all the time. New houses mm -hmm. being built just like they were being built in the 70s era, mm -hmm. but with slightly better uh, insulation in the attic or slightly better insulation at the ducts. Mm -hmm. But other than that, very leaky, um, not particularly high performance. Let's show these guys how to do this right, shall we? That sounds good. Hey, how can people get a hold of you, Sean? Oh, one last thing I forgot, Sean. If someone wanted a home assessment, um, now, you came out as my buddy. I didn't have to pay Sean for this, full disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what would it cost to get a blower door done? And, so, and what are some of the tests that people might want to assess their yeah. uh, indoor air quality at their house? That's a good question, Matt. So uh, what, what I do is I, I call them home performance assessments mm -hmm. because it's not just an energy audit. We're not just looking at how much energy you might be saving or, or wasting. Um, it's about the entire enclosure. So building science is the system of interrelated systems. And so I want to look at as many of those systems as I can because they all interrelate. Yep. So the duct system interrelates with the building envelope. And so the, the testing we just did was a blower door, but there's the visual inspection that goes into that duct leakage testing. You can get IR scans. You can, you can do all of these other things to further diagnose what's going on. Yeah. So um, from that perspective, you can pay as little as maybe uh, $200 for someone to come out and do a blower door, but you may want a more extensive audit that's going to yeah. have a lot more in it. And what's so. the high side? If you really want an extensive uh, assessment, maybe you've got a bigger house, four or 5,000 square feet, what would that maybe cost? Yeah, so a I mean, thousand bucks, a couple right? of thousand, exactly. Yeah, I've, uh, I've definitely seen them in 2,500 up to, 20, I mean, 25,000, depending on the size of the house, yeah, right? Yeah, if you had so a huge it, house. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But for an average person, I could see easily spending a thousand and two thousand bucks to get a blower door, come in with an infrared camera, really get a good assessment on the house mm -hmm. and figure out what to do because every house is different and every house has levels of what could be done to them, right? In this yeah. house, we're gonna end up doing a lot because mm -hmm. I can't go halfway on my right. projects. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go all the way, and but someone could come in and do some air sealing mm -hmm. and reblow that attic and change the duct work out. Exactly, and that's the important part about the testing is the testing is nothing without some sort of recommendation of what to do with those numbers. Yeah. So you have a lot of leakage. You need to now put a plan together like you're doing That's right. with what to do, what order to do those things in. And if you're in Austin, what's your website, Sean, if people uh, yes. want to hire your company? So it's uh, www.iaqtexas.com. Uh, we do duct sealing, uh, duct cleaning, uh, and then building envelope sealing with, with Aero Barrier. So uh, yeah, that's what's what Sean, we're really appreciate everything, brother. Yeah, you're welcome. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's video from the Real Remodel series. You know, we got into a little bit of building science in this video, but there's of course so much more to learn. If you're a builder or remodeler who's been watching The Build Show, I've got a special training for you that's two days of in-depth building science. This is gonna be with my friends at Construction Instruction. Two full days of training in Denver at their facility. I'll put a link in the description below. This is gonna cost about 2,000 bucks to come, but you're gonna have some really in-depth training for two days. I'll be teaching along with Gord and Mark and Justin, who I learned from 15, 20 years ago now. It's been a while but this is gonna get into some really good depth on building science, how to build a good house, how to make a good envelope. We're gonna show you how to actually test things. It's gonna be a really good training, guys. So click that link below and I hope to see you in Denver.